and welcome to today's model workshop. Today I'm going to show you how to rig a World War One biplane or monoplane. There's an easy way and there's a hard way. First I'm going to show you the hard way and how it can mess with your head and then I'm going to show you the easy way. I promise it's easy once you get the hang of it. Now I was messing with my own mojo and I'll point out to you straight away this is pretty much the limit of my camera's focus and zoom here so that's my fingernail for comparison uh, knock some things around if I get a ruler in there that's one centimeter that's two centimeters three centimeters so you get a sense of the scale here that we're talking each of those little cylinders is about four millimeters long now I was all set to make my own turnbuckles basically you get a piece of wire you wrap it around a little three millimeter oh, three millimeter get a piece of wire wrap it around a little point point three millimeter point five millimeter drill bit and then just twist 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 snap it off wrap it around twist it twist snap it off then you can make your own turnbuckles it's a nightmare it's it was messing with my mojo I really didn't want to start doing 30 40 of these each one was a pain in the bum I've got two here now, yep, that's great, but I'm not going to keep making them because, do you know why? Because I was listening to a podcast, uh, it's called On The Bench, if you haven't listened to it before, I heartily recommend it, uh, it is by some Australian guys, and it's all about scale models, and it's really good, um, yeah, check it out, wherever you download your podcast from On The Bench. I was listening to episode 27 and the general manager of Wingnut Wings, a guy named, uh, yeah, a guy named Richard Alexander was their guest. And they were talking to him about how he rigs his biplanes and he said, no, I don't worry about this stuff. All I do is I get some rigging and a bit of tubing like this and that's good enough for him. He doesn't stuff around with all this stuff. He also said it's quite hard to get these to align perfectly. Once they're like this, it's hard to align them perfectly along the line of the rigging. And you know what? If it's good enough for the GM of Wingnut Wings, it's good enough for me. So let's get stuck in. So what do you need to rig? a World War One biplane or monoplane. You need a really good pair of tweezers. These are pretty fine. These are Tamiya brand, brand tweezers. They work for me. They're great. You need some rigging. Um, this is ammo by Mig Jimenez. Uh, it's 0.2 millimeter diameter. I picked it up for 10 bucks at a model show. Any kind of stretchy rigging will do. You could go old school, you could try and do it using stretched sprue or god forbid you know black cotton or something like that but it's just going to be a nightmare. The beauty of this stuff, you know normally if you've watched my channel before you know I like to save money where I can. The beauty of this stuff is that it has a bit of stretch and it has a bit of elasticity so if you accidentally bang it with your finger it stretches rather than just popping straight off like stretched sprue would. Um, it also makes it easier once it's attached to one end, you can stretch it and then attach it to the other side. It's a lot better. It's worth 10 bucks, I promise you. Um, the other thing that I have, you know, if you want to do stretched sprue, go for your life, but you are making life harder for yourself, and I'm cheap, and I say that. The other thing I have is some brass tubing. This is by Albion Alloys, and it is 0.7 millimeters diameter width and the internal diameter is 0.5 a millimeter so 0.2 and 0.2 can fit inside you also need some super glue a ruler a scalpel that's about it let's get stuck in now the easiest way I've found to cut lengths of your brass tubing some people do it on, on glass tiles or ceramic tiles. Um, you know, that's fine. If that's how you work, that's fine with me. But I've found the easiest way is just to do it on a cutting mat with a more blunt-ish scalpel. So I'm cutting 4mm lengths. So I've got that. Let's try and show this on the camera as opposed to not showing it to you. 
So, four millimeters, and then you just gently run your blade along, and that has now cut off the little piece. So you just roll, you roll the blade until it scores through. You don't push down hard, otherwise you completely flatten the tube, and that's no good to us. So rolling it along, they do tend to shoot off, and you can see just how consistent those two are in size. <laughs> one is four millimeters and one is five, so the beauty is you get a lot of tube if you're only cutting four millimeters at a time. And that's all there is to it. The hardest part on this, literally the hardest part, is making sure that they don't shoot off into the distance when you cut them, like that one just did. Um, cut as many as you need. Obviously. <laughs> that's a really unhelpful thing to say. So yeah. And each of these is fine. It's not getting squished at the end. If they were, get yourself a drill bit that matches the internal diameter and simply squeeze it in and push out the other end and that will get your tube back into a circular shape but these are getting flattened certainly not flattened enough that I can't get the rigging through them so I'm going to keep cutting a few more of these when I say a few more I think I need about 30, 40, quite a lot of them so I'm going to keep going. Now I've already made a start on the underneath rigging, just to show you what it looks like as we go. Um, I've been taking great care, so I've kind of left parts off the top of the plane already, and I'm taking great care not to wipe out these two little crosshairs on the top of the machine guns, because they're quite delicate. So what I have been doing and obviously this would change from aircraft to aircraft, is resting the top of the plane on a wad of royal up, rolled up toilet paper. It's pretty glamorous. Okay, now it's not sitting on it, on the actual uh, crosshairs. So, here's how the rigging looks at this stage. So it's pretty fine stuff. Um, basically, every single one, there is a little piece of tube, so you put some super glue down where it's been to mount to the body, attach the easy line, thread the tube onto the thin, thin thread, and that is a nightmare. If you've ever thought that threading a needle is tricky, this is going to really test your eyes and your patience. And then run it up to a dob of super glue on wherever it's mounting to. It's easy peasy. I have to say, full points to Wingnut Wings, because at each of the points where they mount to the body, the angle of this is like a little, tiny little wedge that comes up from the bodywork, and I'll try and show it to you. might be struggling with my camera here. There's a tiny little wedge just there that comes up from the bodywork, a tiny little triangle, and that is the perfect angle to mount a tiny piece of brass tube the, the brass tube just falls down and it sits there. It's on the right angle to go to where the wire is meant to go to. So once again, I am rather in awe of Wingnut Wings engineering. That, to me, is pretty amazing. But I guess the main reason I'm showing you the underneath is you have to have your ducks in a row here, guys. You have to be planned. So I wanted to get all the bottom done before I flipped it over and started working on the top because once I mount that little kind of pyramid tripod thing that all the top wire is attached to, there's no way I can then flip it on its back like this and do the bottom. So be methodical, think about what you're doing, and um, fingers crossed, it'll make sense. The other thing I will stress is, let's go back to sitting the camera down, is check out your instructions on how to rig, because as much as I love Wingnut Wings instruction booklets, this was a tiny bit unclear. Like, when you look at all that there, it's just a bit a bit daunting. Um, it didn't make a lot of sense on the first couple of inspections. So, what I do recommend 
is then also check out, flipping to that page, the three quarter view, the three quarter view, the you know, top and bottom and side, I don't know what, the, the blueprinty sort of views, and that really helped me work out exactly where the bottom rigging went in particular. Not enough hands. Uh, in particular, this stuff just here in the undercarriage made a lot more sense once I had actually looked at these these side-on views as opposed to the sort of yeah the three-quarter isometric view that I showed you a minute ago. All right, enough talking. That's how you prepare. Let's just get in and start doing the top. Time to flip this birdie over. One thing I will point out is that these do actually take tension. So check out the wings. The, di the, the dihedral is affected by the rigging like that was where the wings were. And they're now down, being held down by that undercarriage wiring. So hopefully, once I've got it done up the top here, that will actually take some of the pressure off and it'll get back to flat again because at the moment it's got a distinct droop. It's pretty strong stuff. I love this easy line. It's cool. Right, here goes. I'm going to do the first upper wing rigging. So it's going to go from these close ones up to this little pulley and then down again. These further back ones, I'll do them later because otherwise I'm going to have a hard time getting underneath those to do the closer ones. So I have here piece of rigging, two little turnbuckles, I've got a fresh glob of super glue here and I've got my fairly fine toothpick ready to work with. And it's pretty simple, it becomes, it's, it's fiddly and time consuming, but it's simple, if that makes sense. It's not rocket science. The trick is to get a good little glob of super glue where you want it on the wing and picking up hope you can see that and just putting that so that it reacts with the super glue and it's pretty instantaneous if you're not sure just blow on it and that'll help the super glue to dry I believe, nope, that hasn't cured yet. Bugger. Take two. <laughs> it's fiddly. It's not hard, but it's fiddly. Alright. So, try that again. A little tiny dob of super glue there. Get your end of your ring and just hold it to the super glue in roughly the right position. And you will know it's worked because it will it'll cure pretty instantaneously. Alright, that's worked that time. That's good. Alright. Now, I reckon this is going to be a bit of a battle sometimes for my camera to cope with, so apologies in advance if chunks of this are out of focus. Really, not ideal. Now for the tricky bit. Threading a turnbuckle onto this. The trickiest bit is getting it up. Um, I will, you know, slightly warm weather is better for this because your fingers will be ever so slightly sweatier and that just makes it a little bit easier. So threading these because you know, the, the thread will stick to them. The downside is it will stick to them when you don't want it to. Threading these, if you thought threading a needle was bad, these are worse. How's this for riveting television? Got it. Cancer at the top. Bang. It's on. So 
as I was saying, you can kind of see already that's almost sitting in just the right position to thread this up and down. Um, you could do it as one separate one and another separate one. I'm just doing it because I'm hoping that it will take a little bit of the tension of the wings and uh, sort of counteract that tension under underneath so that it becomes a little bit stronger and a bit more back to normal for me. I hope that makes sense. Okay, get the cruddy glue off my toothpick. A little super glue up the top there. And you can see how far that's stretching. I'm just going to give that a second. Hope you can see how far that's stretching. It's really tricky to see the, the rigging line. But yeah, it's, it's not got massive tension on it. It's maybe 50% larger than it was when it was lying slack. And yeah, so if I let go, you can see over here how loose this is now. And this one is perfectly tense right, so I've got my second one in there. Super glued down the bottom. Turnbuckle rod is sitting down there, and that's holding it nice and tight in that little depression. And I've put some super glue up the top. And it's just a matter of stretching it up, and if I can, winding it around that little tiny pulley just so that the join is nice and strong. Ha! Huh. There. The first two up the top are done. It's time consuming and fiddly. Bloody fiddly. But really effective once it's done. Let's do some more. And there you have it. From there, it's basically just a matter of repeating and doing more of it. Um, that makes it sound very easy, but it's not any more complex than that. So I've kept going with the top, and I'm happy with it. Um, I guess, what would be my tips and tricks? What, what are the pitfalls to avoid? Number one, use elasticated rigging. Seriously, don't try and stretch sprue. It's a bloody nightmare. Number two is mount it to a flat surface. So what I found, mount it to the wing and then go up to the thin piece. Mount it to the wing and then go down to the thin little struts of the undercarriage. It's much easier for that second piece to mount to something you can wrap it around a little bit rather than trying to glue it to a flat surface. The, when you've got tension on it and you're trying to glue it to a flat surface, it's not easy. It will be very hard to make it stick. Um, number three, don't stuff around making your own turnbuckles. Seriously, like I showed you right at the start of the video, life is too short for that, honestly. Again, if it's good enough for the general manager of Wingnut Wings, it's good enough for me. And it should be good enough for you too. Um, yeah, I'm happy. I mean, this this is not going to win any competitions, this model. There are some flaws with this, and I'll do a video very soon where I go through the final results, but when we're talking just rigging, I'm happy. I'll show you the underside as well. It's a bit tricky for a lot of it to appear on camera, but you get a sense of it there. There you go. Um, yeah, I guess those are probably my three tips to make life easy for yourself, and it's effective, and it looks great. I hope this has been helpful. Um, chime in below if you have any questions or comments, but otherwise I'll check you next time on Dave's Model Workshop. See you later guys. Bye.